So you want to prepare your walls to do your wallpaper. Let me bring you into the bathroom that we're waiting on right now and show you the product we used. So we just did this little bathroom and we stripped it all down. We took down the wallpaper from a, uh, from a very uh, unprofessional installation, cleaned the walls off, skim coated the walls with joint compound, and now we just sealed the walls. Okay, so you have the look, that sealer over a very porous, dusty surface. Okay, now you're the homeowner, you're the guy doing the job, whatever. Just that the cameraman can come over here and point the camera toward me and these products. There are several mar there are several products on the market that you can purchase to prime your walls. Number one, let's talk about primer. The term is used now interchangeably with the word sealer. So I'm going to use it because common usage dictates that I use the word primer because a lot of people don't recognize the proper term, what, what they really need, which is a sealer. And so they'll go to the store and they'll get this, this product right here. They'll say, well, I'm gonna do my walls. I'll prime the walls. And they see this, and it's about $12 a gallon, which attracts them and they grab it. I will show you what it looks like going on the wall. It's pretty thick, right? Keep that idea in mind, that it's thick. <clears throat> when you're going over new joint compound, over sheetrock, you don't want something thick. What do you think a thick primer is going to do on a very porous, dry joint compound surface? Just think about it. Do you think this stuff is thin enough to penetrate all of the pores on joint compound? If you do, you're wrong. Then we come to a product called Romans, it's called RX35. Philip Jeffries hates this product and says publicly, don't use it on our wallpaper. How thick is it? Wow, look at the difference. Why would something so thin which hasn't been watered down by me, be double the price of this product. Hold on to that thought. And then you got the Sherwin-Williams counterpart of the 999, and that's the Loxon products. They have many of them. This stuff that I use for wallpaper is about $23 a gallon, comparable to the price of this. Let's see the consistency of this stuff. Pretty much the same, right? Thin, keep that in mind. And then we go to guards from Zinser. Keep in mind that Zinser also makes this one, Bullseye. Let's see its consistency. There are many surfaces to hang wallpaper on. Number one, a painted surface. Subcategory, what type of paint? Flat paint? Acrylic paint? Uh, Semi-gloss? Enamel? Then you have the non-painted surface, which is bare sheetrock and finishing compound. Then you have wallpaper. There are many things you're gonna hang wallpaper on. They're not all the same and they all require a different preparation. 
Your go-to product by far is right here. Guards, folks, read the label. The people in the store, they don't know. They don't know. Nobody knows anything anymore. Everybody's so compartmentalized with their information. Uh, if you go to the paint section in one of the big box stores, they can't tell you where the sheetrock is. This is how bad it's gotten. I knew an ear, nose, and throat doctor who specialized in noses. And when I asked him, why do you specialize in the nose? He said, I don't. I began specializing in the left nostril. That's how bad it's getting. Your go-to product, remember it? Guards. This product you're going to use when you remove wallpaper and you have a glue residue on the wall. Perfect. This product you're going to use on sh raw sheetrock that's been finished with joint compound. Go-to product. This product can be used on painted surfaces, semi-gloss, flat. If you try to hang wallpaper on a matte finish, a flat finish, and you don't use this, you just caused yourself lots of money in repair when you take the product down. This, and this, and this can be used for most of the applications that I do, which is hang over raw sheetrock and a joint compound finish. You know what I'm saying, where the seams are all finished and you just have, they call it, okay, it's spackled, it's ready to go. It's not ready to go. Either one of these three, either one of them can be used because they're thin, it's basic, basic information. What is this stuff really? You really wanna know what this is? It's all glue and water, that's all it is. This stuff is going to penetrate, because it's thin, your paper on your sheetrock and your porous joint compound. All of these three, you can use them on it. They're all about the same price. This is your go-to one. I'm gonna tell you why. It's more prevalent in the USA than this second runner-up. This one is a Sherwin product. Very good for dusty surfaces, chalky. When you think of Loxon, think of a chalky substance. You wanna seal, it's dusty. You keep doing this, the dust keeps coming off on your hand. That's your product, locks on. Raw sheetrock plaster. Right here. Well, what about this? You wanna throw a coat of protection on your painted surface? Don't put this on raw sheetrock. Please don't do that and try to hang wallpaper. Don't forget, you try to hang wallpaper over this the same day, guess what's gonna happen? Bubbles, bubbles. Why? How long do you think this takes to cure? You understand? It's gonna take days for this stuff to dry. Not only that, it's thick. You try to hang wallpaper and go cheap, you save a big $10 and use the bullseye, you got bubbles. What's going on here? This didn't cure. This is really ready to go within a couple of hours. But if you're a new installer, give it a day. Give it a day, because if you move your paper off the wall, if you don't have it right, and you only have this dry for two hours, it's gonna come right off. It's not ready. If you're new, if, you, if you're not new and you, you get on the wall, perfect. It all dries together. 
But take my word for it. If you're hanging shimmering wallpaper, something with a shine, or something with a, a sheen to it, and you try to hang that paper and you pull the paper off the wall, think about bubble gum on a wall. You step on it, I mean, on, on it, or you pull on it, comes off like rubber, right? Same thing. Take a look at it in the rim of this thing. You get an idea of what this stuff does when it's on the wall, okay? It's like, I told you, it's glue, right? And it acts like, uh, it's a membrane. Let's recap. You're hanging wallpaper on a ceiling or a wall, usually a wall. It's painted already. You can use any one of these. Any one of these. I prefer that you stick with guards. If you don't have guards, I prefer that you go with this one. You can use this if you want it to go cheap. Make sure it dries. Okay? Do not use PVA primer on sheetrock and then try to hang wallpaper. Don't do it. Here's what you do in that case. Come in, tell the homeowner, the general contractor, I'm gonna do a test on the wall. You take tape, put it over an X. You take a utility knife, make an X with your blade on the wall, put tape on it, pull it off. If you have wall surface on your tape, don't hang the paper. Not ready. You're a superstar at that point. You look like you know what you're talking about. You go into a, a room, the general contractor says, ready to go, need this paper up, come on, let's go, move, move, move. Right, been there, done it. And you say, hold on, let me test your wall. Take your blade out, an X, put tape on it. Pull the tape off. If you have wall surface on your tape, don't take the job. That has to be now sanded. That has to be sealed. Here's the product, go over it with this. Let it dry a day, give it a day. Do the same test. If you should hang that paper, they will come after you. For the price of the paper to replace it, you won't get paid, you'll have an issue. All because they didn't know what they were doing, okay? We gotta know what we're doing here. One of the best ways to know what you're doing let me just share with you a little secret. All of these cans have 1-800 numbers. Give them a call. You get the technical people. They are the ones that are familiar with the usage of the product. Give them a call. It might take you an hour to find out what you're looking for, but if you don't find out, you might get stuck with a situation where you're blaming the product, the, the people that manufacture the product are blaming you. Be familiar with your products. This is your number one, right here. This is your number two. This is your number one if you have a chalky surface, right here, locks on. And it might be the new finished sheetrock. The guys come in, sand it, tell you it's all ready to go. It's not ready, it's got chalk all over it. You keep cleaning it, more and more chalk. Here's your product, right here, locks on. It's great for exteriors too. They have an exterior version of it. Locks on over block. You know block is very dusty. You know, when you're doing a, a painting on the outside of a house. Never been painted before. Locks on, best. It, it sticks into the, the surface. It penetrates all the pores. Receives the new paint beautifully. Okay, those are the products. They're all from uh, different companies, except for the Zinser products. And uh, there are other products on the market that I haven't identified here, but these are the most I use. I hope that you uh, learned something from the video. If you did, click on like and subscribe to my channel. You folks from Europe use different products. You've been telling me that on my YouTube videos and in my emails that I get. It's interesting how these products are not available in the UK. And, uh, but you do use a similar uh, product. It's a very thin sealer. And that's mostly what we're using when we hang uh, wallpaper. Because most of the time we're hanging wallpaper, we're doing it over new uh, installed sheetrock joint compound. And you wanna go with one of these. 
Very rarely can you take wallpaper and hang it right over the wall. It's done all the time, I know that. But this glue <clears throat> is very corrosive. Okay, if you stick your bare hand in this glue, you stir your glue, you start to feel stinging in your skin. It's corrosive, all right? If you should put that over the wall <clears throat> and hang your paper, you're not gonna see that it's corrosive until you take the paper down and you'll see all of the shell of the paint, an eighth of an inch in, is all compromised. And now you have to do a repair on the wall because you didn't put a barrier between your paint and your glue. So I would suggest that you always use either a primer, a true primer, it could be this, but in, even in that case with the painted wall, either one of these three will suffice. It literally holds the paint in and prevents the glue from penetrating because it is a glue, it's a thin glue membrane. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one and click on like and subscribe.